The race for Cook County State's Attorney isn't settled yet. Retired appellate judge Eileen O'Neill Burke narrowly leads Clayton Harris III, but there may be enough outstanding mail-in ballots to affect the outcome. The winner of the Democratic primary will go up against Bob Fioretti. He is the lone Republican running for Cook County State's Attorney. Andrew Charles Kapinski is running for the seat as a Libertarian. And of course, there's the presidential primary in Illinois. President Biden easily won the Democratic side, and Donald Trump picked up the Republican side. Nikki Haley had about 14 percent of the vote, despite stepping away from the race earlier this month. Joining us now is WGN political analyst Paul Lustig. Good morning, Paul. Hey, guys. Uh, late night. Yeah. Always interesting, yes. though. How about we start local? Sure. Uh, are there cracks in the progressive movement in Chicago with the, the tax uh, yeah, measure well, and not it, doing well? And, Larry, it depends which, what race you're looking at to yeah. make that question. When it, look, when it comes to bring Chicago home, which it looks like it's going to fail. I don't think we call it yet, but it looks like it's going to fail. You know, the, the question is this. People may look at Mayor Johnson, because this was this was him, right? Yeah. He, he had two of his three legs of his stool that he's gotten through city council, mm -hmm. but this one he needed public opinion. And it's almost as though uh, Chicagoans said, look, we are sympathetic to your agenda. He did beat Paul Vallis a year ago. So we're sympathetic to your agenda, but we don't want to pay for it. And uh, so that, and add on the fact that it was sort of complicated on the ballot. People had to read it, turn the page over, yeah. you know, on and on. I think that was part of the problem. Yeah. But now the real issue is going to be, okay, so if you want to have this homeless pro homelessness assistance, what are you going to do? Because it won't be through Bring Chicago Home. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the national race, uh, things happening in Ohio and how that impacts yeah. the big picture. So that's really interesting, Robin, because the, the candidate who won the Republican nomination there was the Trump-supported candidate going up against Sherrod Brown, who's after, I think, his fifth or sixth term at this point. Um, but the truth is, it's the candidate the Democrats wanted to run against, because now it's not sort of too you know, regular Republicans who are running. Now you have Sherrod Brown with his history, but you have a Trump-backed MAGA candidate who's a businessman, not a politician, uh, running. So the thought from Democrats is this is what it would take to keep Sherrod Brown around, but we'll see. Ohio is really probably the state that's going to determine control of the Senate this year. We can walk through the map, but believe me, that's where it's all going to come down to is who wins that Ohio race. That may be who controls the Senate. Yeah. There are many Republicans who say that they will still support Trump regardless of where these trials go. But what about the real question really is about independence and what are they saying about the Trump trials? Well, independents are the group that everybody needs to get. And, and here's the thing. Joe Biden is president right now. So will this be a referendum on Joe Biden or will this be a referendum on another person who used to also be president? And you have a group of people who are saying, you know, I can't see myself voting for Trump, but I don't want to vote for Biden as well, either. So it's hard to know at this point where they go. The bottom line is going to be Biden is going to have to give independents a reason to support him. I don't think the reason is, but I'm not Donald Trump. Uh, pick me on the alternative, not the almighty, or as Biden likes to say. I'm not sure that's enough to bring independents over. People have to feel it right now. They're going to the gas station, they're going to the grocery store, and they're still feeling the pain. There's a lot of time before the election. If inflation comes down, if things are more comfortable, then maybe people go that way. But aside from that, the reason people are putting all of the, the criminal charges and stuff against Trump aside is because he's really done a brilliant job of making that all look politically motivated. As a lawyer, I can tell you that a lot of those charges are, they're being done by DOJ people who are, it's not about politics, it's about the law. Mm -hmm. um, but Trump supporters out there see it as political, and for Trump, that's really useful. We'll see what happens. Yep. Paul Lisnick, thanks Thank for being guys. with us. You can Thanks, check out Paul. Paul every Sunday at 9 a.m. for the WGM Political Report. Thanks again. Thanks, Paul. Here's a look at some of the other stories making headlines this morning.